and welcome to the new episode of Full Funnel Live. As you can see, finally, <laughs> we are recording this episode together, sitting in our office in Valencia, Spain. And meanwhile, uh, let us know where you are joining us from. Tell us in the chat where you are joining us from, and I would share the agenda with you guys. Um, we were thinking a lot about uh, what to share today and actually came up uh, after a lot of uh, in-house discussions, we came up with the idea to share with you a practical playbook and insights of how to run B2B customer research. This is a hot topic. If you'll open LinkedIn, probably every 10th post says you need to run customer research, you need to leverage customer insights, you need to be customer-based company, customer-led company, which is um, absolutely fine and it's easy to agree, right? It's easy to like, but the only question that we always get from our peers and from our customers as well, okay, so how actually we need to run that customer research and the most important part, how can we leverage the insights and the data that we are getting from the customer research into actions? And this is what we are going to share with you today. And nice to see a lot of folks from Stockholm, from Sweden. Hope it's not snowing there. <laughs> uh, Nick from Nottingham, Barat. Nice to meet you guys. And okay, that being said, um, what we are going to cover today and Parent from New Orleans, cheers. So what we're going to cover today, right? The framework that we use to run customer research, we also will cover community questions. There were a few nice questions that um, our uh, guys from our community asked. And you are guys as well, you are very welcome to post your questions, we'll cover everything. Uh, we'll present you the framework and then we'll finish uh, this presentation with some practical examples. We prepared the slides just to show you how to use the insights and turn these insights into practical actions. That being said, I think we can kick it off with starting answering the most popular question, why to run customer research. All right. Hello, everybody here from Lensi in Spain. So super happy that I could have my co-founder finally join me here live in the same room and the reason that we want to run customer research is essentially when you look at there could be like different objectives and different reasons why you can why you want to run research and we'll cover them in more detail but just on a general level the problem is that a lot of companies make decisions based on very limited data so whether you are looking at your analytics or your attribution software whatever as, as advanced your software might be, the big problem is you're seeing a very, very small part of the picture, right? So you might see some data um, in terms of what kind of content they consumed or uh, how they came in your funnel or on your website, uh, but that's it, right? And then even if you go the next step, which is what a lot of companies do, and then they start digging into the data, for example, from sales calls, which is definitely something you should be doing, you should realize the following. According to Garden Research and to research that we have done, pretty much covers that. Uh, I think it's like 17% of all the time that buyers spend as they do their research, as they go through their journey, they spend talking to vendors. Now, you're not the only vendor that I speak to. So maybe out of their whole journey, they have spent five to 10% of their time speaking to your sales, right? By the time they speak to your sales, in a lot of cases, 60, 70% of the journey is already done. And if all you use as input are those sales calls, are, are the analytics, you're missing out on what, 90% of the picture, or at least 70% of the picture. And that is exactly why we need to do customer research. And we do research to, as you will see, to update our, go, essentially to set up a go-to-market strategy, to update our ICP, to know which customers are a good fit, which must, customers are not a good fit, which channels we want to use, how we want to position our solution, how we want to 
mess what how our messaging should look like so that it resonates what our content should look like so it's basically all the major decisions that you need to make when you're creating your go-to-market strategy marketing plan when you're running campaigns should be based on the customer research do you get that right yeah absolutely and um i think that the most essential part would be presenting a sharing with you that step-by-step -step framework but before we'll start i would love to ask you guys who are listening to us online what do you think should be the first step in the customer research where should we start share with us in the chat and um by the way if anybody would be making notes please share with us would love to see would love to see your notes after the session but let us know in the chat where do you think uh, should we start with the customer research? What should be the first step? And uh, while you're typing, uh, what we would love to share, so we'll be sharing with you that framework, the steps, and also uh, we just picked up one of the examples from our consulting project. So just to make it practical, not just theoretical one. So, uh, Let's kick it off and uh, while typing, I would uh, tell you my honest opinion. The first step when it comes to presenting, uh, when, when, you when you plan to run customer research should be always analysis of your sales pipeline velocity, revenue trajectory, and setting up based on this, the goals. Because the reason why a lot of companies say, yeah, we need to improve marketing message, or we need to improve our ICP, or we need to improve something else. But why, right? What's the root reason? Why do we want to do this? And when you start looking at sales pipeline velocity at your revenue metrics, right? And if you do a really good in-depth analysis, you look the data that is broken down into several segments, you can come up with practical questions, right? And you can definitely see the areas that you need to improve. So for example, you look at your win rate, at your ACV, at your sales cycle length, at the number of sales qualified opportunities you generate, and then you see the patterns, right? You see the trajectory, is it increasing or decreasing? And obviously, uh, for all revenue metrics like ACV, sales qualified opportunities and win rates, we want to see the trajectory increasing, right? And sales cycle length should be shortening and should be declining, right? And if we see the contrary impact on these revenue metrics, that should trigger us a question, why does this happen? And that's the first step that leads you to the meaningful analysis, right? For example, you look at different segments and then you analyze, okay, we have, uh, we are targeting financial service companies and we see that we lose more deals in that sector. Why does it happen? So our win rate consistently declines. What's the reason for this, right? That's a good deal. And based on this, you can start doing the right analysis. You can start analyzing one and lost deals and analyzing the patterns. Maybe there is a problem with indeed with targeting with your ICP definition and your targeting companies that should be disqualified. You shouldn't even add these companies to your ideal list, right? To, 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 all, to, to the list of your target accounts. Maybe that's the problem, right? Or maybe you are losing on the brand level. So these customers, okay, you book the calls, but they say, okay, um, maybe your brand is not enough credible or you lose on the feature level, on the value level, I don't know, right? So there are multiple things. Or there could be another issue. So these customers, uh, these prospects, they simply don't understand what your product does. We see this a lot of times. There are a lot of nice products, or let's say a lot of good marketers on LinkedIn who post really good content. But then these people complain, okay, we have a lot of people who say, I would love to learn what your product does. And then they visit the website and literally have no idea what this product does because product is described in uh, using the slang that's, I mean, nobody understands. It sounds witty, it sounds smart, but it doesn't lead to any meaningful conversions, right? That's the point. So the first thing is always analysis of your revenue metrics, of your sales pipeline velocity, defining the areas for improvement, and then setting up goals. What do we want to achieve? What do we want to approve? Mm. 
So um, the second step would be setting up the objectives for your research, right? Uh, like once, once you define it, now you basically say, okay, so with this, in that case, if I lose more deals in the financial sector, I'm coming back to the practical example, right? Uh, what could be concrete objectives, right? Maybe it makes sense because our sales reps or our account executives told us that's quite often, you know, like during discovery calls, prospects complain that they don't really get what our product does and they don't see how are we different from the competitors or they always compare us to competitors, right? Then what does it mean? Okay, maybe it makes sense to validate our marketing message, right? With this, with the buyers from this segment. Next, uh, if that's the case, if, if we are making that hypothesis, right? Maybe it makes sense to interview existing customers from that financial service segment and understand how they see us different from the competition and what is the value they are getting from our product right and as well looking at the lost deals and understanding should we improve our qualification and disqualification criteria right or maybe there are some insights that we can gain to improve our marketing message as well maybe there are, there are some questions that these people ask and we need to address them better so these are the first steps analysis right finding the areas for improvement and then setting up clear objectives all right let's go to the next step and that is to define the format and the scope for the research and here i also have two questions that i'll come back to but just to give you first an overview the overview is that you have different types of research you can study your deals you can speak to sales you can interview your customers you can run message validation tests you can run buyer research surveys or panels etc right so there are different formats and not each format is a good fit for each objective right so for example we said that an assumption that we have is that maybe our messaging doesn't resonate with our target buyers from that uh, financial services sector or segment right well this is what you can do you can validate you can use a tool like winter to to validate your messaging the provide a platform where you can upload or you know your messaging or a website or a web page and then get uh, detailed feedback as people go through the copy uh, you can ask them specific questions etc cetera, etc cetera. they're not sponsoring <laughs> this this podcast is just a totally great tool it's probably the only i think was a good that... idea actually <laughs> <laughs> we need to sell it to yeah. so it's something that um uh there was a question actually here i think from from patrick patrick coming he said how do you work around finding a decent size pool of interviewees or high ticket products with smaller uh, total uh, total addressable market now we are going to go into details when it comes to specifically interviewing your own customers um potentially also buyers but i just wanted to kind of refer back to these questions because like using a tool like winter a solution really it's more than a tool because they actually provide you with a panel of buyers that fit your icp right so this is one way in which you can uh quite quickly i believe it's within like 24 or 48 hours that you get your results back again it's not sponsored <laughs> i'm just mentioning this uh they also uh, allow you to do buyer research so maybe you want to do uh let's say mm, do a research of 50 buyers from the financial service uh, industry specific type of roles and want to understand where they're getting their information what channels they use who they follow uh, maybe you can ask them about their challenges right so you can create a survey and you can run it on their platform and what i was saying here is like based on the objectives that you have like message validation obviously you want to get feedback do, do we want to research the buyers yes we can research the buyers but in some cases you actually have to research your customers right and i was also sharing a concrete scope right so we decide on a scope and we should also say okay how many do we need in this at this stage for example how many buyers uh for the message validation or for a buyer research 
to understand the concrete scope so you can actually plan it and do this. Now, the other two formats that I mentioned, the first one was uh, interviewing sales and analyzing deals. Well, this is obviously you can use to understand the, for example, let's say I want to understand why we are losing so many deals in this segment. Well, I might go and select the top five in terms of revenue, deals that we have lost, right? Big deals that we have lost. So the biggest deals, the most painful deals, and go and interview our account executives. Obviously, I can also go and go through the gong calls if you have them or any other call recording software that you might have to understand what was happening on, this, on those calls, what were the objections that were raised, what were the reasons why they didn't decided not to work with you, and then follow that up with an interview with an account executive who was in charge of that deal, for example, right? But then you might also want to say, okay, but why do the customers buy our solution? Why do they choose us? So those who do buy, what were the specific jobs to be done that we could do better than our competitors? What are the other maybe points of differentiation from their perspective that made them choose us instead of our competitors. And by the way, who did they compare us to, et cetera. All right. Um, if we want to understand that, uh, we can, again, go study the sales calls, et cetera. This will give you kind of a bit of a limited information. And this is for one case and one example where you definitely want to go and interview your customers. So our format and scope to answer this research question would be, interview our top largest uh, customer from, uh, sorry, customers from that financial service sector, right? And ask them all, all of these questions. We'll come back to the questions later. So just to summarize, we have different formats, message validation, buyer research, customer interviews, and uh, analyzing existing deals, sales calls, and speaking to sales. And at this stage, you also want to understand, OK, how many should I actually include? Um, and with that, I just wanted to address the two questions that I had that were coming up. So Patrick asked, um, how do you find a decent size pools of interviewees? Again, depending on the format, either you're using an existing panel or, or a tool. Um, another way that you can do that is you can just go and reach out on LinkedIn. You can build a list on LinkedIn Sales Navigator, build a list of target buyers and reach out to them and ask them. Uh, this is actually, I think, from Mary Keo. That's uh, she, she in one of her, in a session that she gave at our summit, she shared this tactic, which I loved. She basically, what she does, she, she goes in there she finds these target buyers on LinkedIn Sales Navigator. She sends them a uh, sponsored email, that's basically what you can do in LinkedIn Sales Navigator or just like a organic just message and says, hey, I'm a new marketer here and I would just like to understand this industry. I'm new to this industry. Would you be able to spend like 15, 20 min minutes uh, together with me to share your experience, right? So this could be one way to do this other than buying the audience from a from a solution like Winter, obviously looking at your existing customers, right? Uh, you should basically just go to your CRM and list list your customers. Sometimes it's not possible to identify. For example, we were talking about this in this example for financial service industry. Maybe you're not identifying uh, accounts directly from the industry. So if you end up being able to speak to another customer who might not be from the same industry, I would say, yeah, it's better than not speaking to any, uh, anybody else and getting a, a good, decent sa sample. But pay attention that although maybe your solution is industry agnostic, uh, your buyers are not. So the way that they buy, who they follow, maybe even the reasons, specific reasons why they buy a product may differ from segment to segment. I think I pretty much covered the question of the format and scope. Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, I would just um, add my five cents as a rule of thumb, because if still you want to get okay precise example, what should be my target? Or if you are doing this for the first time, I would always say aim for interviewing or getting insights from 10 customers. It's just a good number. It's not 
a lot it's not too much but again this is kind of uh enough pull to get some insights and then uh one more thing that i recommend to pay attention to whenever you start seeing that information or the insights start repeating themselves then it means okay that's enough i have i mean you don't need to uh kind of getting stuck in the analysis paralysis right if you see the repetitive patterns and the repetitive information okay then you just found what you needed to identify right now that being said uh what's the next step the next step is defining the timeline for that research right because it can be endless it could be it can be infinite right so we need to set up and agree okay so the timeline because then this is how you're going to report to i mean if uh, to your stakeholders to your senior leadership right you say okay during the next three weeks this is what i'm going to do right this is the scope and the timeline when you present the timeline right you need to include several items first the um previous items that you meant that we have already mentioned the goals right the analysis behind these goals the format and the scope of that research and you need to prepare the questionnaire next you are going to reach out to these customers right and um we'll discuss uh, also a little bit later today how are we going to engage these people right but you need to allocate time okay so i will be reaching out to these people trying to get these insights then you in your timeline you need to include time for how long are you going to analyze the insights right and present them in meaningful way so analysis presentation and then basically turning these insights into actionable plan this is the this is the way how you need to think about the timeline right and obviously uh, my recommendation if you do something turn it into project so you can focus on it and you do it relatively fast the longer something takes you to run and get the insights the more frustrated you will be the more frustrated your team will be the more frustrated leadership will be right so turn it into short project and make sure that you uh you uh, execute it relatively fast next define the research questions and i mean you already understood it right these questions will heavily depend on the goals for that research on what you are going to identify but generally speaking we usually uh whenever we do any research we want to focus on five groups of questions which i'm going to present very quickly because then at the end of this uh session we'll share with you practical examples right of questions and the insights that you can uh gain from these uh questions right so five groups the first one uh belongs to by to define the buying triggers what's happening in the business of your clients so they could start looking for solutions or for vendors like your company next the research process so what is their typical scenario right where they are looking for the information how they are going to search are they going to communities are they going to maybe live podcasts i don't know if there are any other live podcasts in B2B marketing aside from full funnel life, but that doesn't matter. Maybe they are, I don't know, like they are going and ask their peers, whatever. Next, decision making process, right? The third category. So, what influences their decision? What information they need, right? Uh, who, who approves the deal? What information they need to present to these people, right? So, basically, the internal decision making process. Uh, then uh, group number four is uh, valid only to existing customers. What is the value they are getting from your product? Or that could be another way if you uh, you can basically run the customer research and uh, you know talk to the customers of your competitor and understand what is the value they are getting from your competitive product to understand where your product falls down right so that could be the group number four and uh, last one is channel presence so what channels these buyers are using for the research and what channels do they use for the professional education 
Why? Because the truth is, and what Vlad already mentioned, that most buyers are not actively buying, they are not in market right now. And lots of them simply are not aware that they have a problem, or maybe they, um, you know, they are not prioritizing that challenge that your product solves. So our core goal as marketers, attracting their attention, right? attracting their attention and uh, making sure that they pay attention to that challenge and start thinking, yeah, indeed, maybe we need to investigate that specific thing and learn more how to solve it, right? These are the most essential uh, steps. And then the next one is how to warm up respondents, right? How to make sure that these people uh, would talk to you or as Bora from our community said, how to make sure that they would would just not spare you that one hour spot <laughs> so it's something that we see over and over again when we start uh, with a new consulting project uh, with a new client we see this very often or just like in these kind of events we get this question a lot like okay um we several things that we observe we observe there were some mindset issues and by mindset issues i mean like okay we should not bother our customers we should not talk to our customers right um they are busy people so there is like one problem right so the problem there is that while a lot of companies a lot of b2b companies assume that when it comes to customer satisfaction no news is good news in fact, only one out of 26 of customers will complain and 25 out of those 26 will just churn without complaining. So if you think about that... I always do this. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to bother your customers, but wait a minute. Like If you don't have any communication, if you don't have any relationship, and you know that 25 out of 26 of those customers are just going to churn, and they're not going to complain, then you might have a much bigger problem than just lack of research, right? So you might lose some really important accounts. Now, <clears throat> that's, that's kind of the mindset. Now, there is a real problem that people, uh, marketers, salespeople, uh, in general, B2B, people working in B2B companies have, and that is they don't have a good relationship with their customers. It can be for different reasons. Could be like I said, there is a lack of communication and the relationship hasn't been built. I also we have a customer that also grew with um, initially a lot through PLG, so product led growth, where there's just by um, the way that these customers were buying self serve mode, there was not a lot of contact, so the relationships are also uh, uh, there lower. So. If this is the case for you, you need to work on improving that relationship. It's as simple as that, right? Um, how can you do that? Well, you can do that in, in different ways. But for example, I mean, if you have a customer that is paying you 100,000 every year for your product, I think it's fair to say that it's okay to, let's say, take a bit of time, study what uh, their hobbies are or what they like and buy a nice gift and send the gift and say, thank you for being our customer. You've been so awesome, right? This could be a... <laughs> How are you going to attribute it to revenue? <laughs> we don't have budget for this. They're already paying. I think even just like a personal thank you note, handwritten or signed by your CEO or a video that you made together with the CEO where they address that, that customer could go a long way. Because, again, not like the majority of companies are not doing that. So think, always think about, okay, what are what is the experience of those buyers? What have they experienced from our brand so far? And what have they experienced from other brands? And if I do something extra, they will notice me, okay? Um, I already gave uh, a, a, the, the, the Mary Keo playbook where, where she said, she simply reaches out to customers and buyers saying, hey, I'm new to the industry, can you help me out? And that can work. Um, definitely. You can also, if your customers are active on any sort of uh, social network or in a community, etc., what I would definitely do as well is I would do some sort of a warm-up there. And what I mean by warm-up, I mean um, if they have shared any sort of content or maybe they, okay, if they have shared any sort of content, I would definitely go there and give them uh, a comment on that. 
A lot of B2B buyers are not super active on LinkedIn, but when they are active, usually they don't have such a high engagement, which simply is to say that if you give them a comment, they are going to notice, right? So uh, you can obviously do more than that. You can, maybe they have commented on some posts. You can start a conversation in there. So this is another way in which you can warm up your target customers. And I, one, one thing that I would definitely do is before reaching out to anybody, I would just spend a little bit of time understanding what the history was. So if they're a current customer, you have a lot of information in the CRM. You can see who is the person who is most actively using your product. You can see the, the people who were engaged mostly during, during the sales calls, right? And you can then do two things. You can first uh, check who they were in contact with and ask a referral. And second, you can obviously use this information so that you can personalize your message, right? Um, do a bit of research in your CRM if they're a customer and do a bit of research on of their profile if they're not a customer so that you can personalize your message where you're inviting them for that research. And uh, finally, another just shared one, one other idea that uh, we have actually implemented several times. We do these live podcasts, but before we also had some recorded podcasts and we did some spe special series where we featured our customers. And for a lot of people, uh, this is actually, especially if you had, you know, names that are kind of... Uh, known in the industry they don't have to be like big names but they can be just known in the industry you can you can simply uh, ask them for an interview on your let's say podcast it doesn't have to be a podcast i can give you other examples but i wanted to come back to that idea of a referral so imagine that i had that uh andre is my customer and that uh i had let's say his colleague or somebody that I see Andre is connected to on LinkedIn on our podcast. So I might reach out to, let's say, whatever, John or Jonathan, Jonathan Bland, let's say. Right? <laughs> so I may reach out to Jonathan and say, hey, Jonathan, I see that you're connected to Andre. You're a good, you seem to be, um, you seem to have a relationship. And um, maybe that's not the right way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but like, would you mind if I reached out to Andre with you in CC and just mentioned that I had you on our podcast and I just want to invite him as a guest, I think it would be a good fit, right? So that's an easy ask. Jonathan would, de would definitely say yes, because it's actually public information. And even if he says no, I can still reach out to Andre and mention that I had Jonathan on the, on the podcast because it's just public information. So some tips there, it doesn't have to be a podcast. It could be... You know, uh, we had a client that, for example, <laughs> I, I, I love this because it's so simple. They, their target industry was pharmaceutical companies. This is probably one of the most difficult industries to target. Um, their buyers were like highly technical, actually scientists. Like they, they are also very difficult to target and to engage and to get a response. They are not really active on LinkedIn. Nevertheless, nevertheless, uh, our client has set up a news, a LinkedIn newsletter. LinkedIn newsletter, and they simply featured every week another professional from the industry. Super simple. So they would have an interview, they would feature them there. So that's another, another uh, example of how you might warm them up and, and get them to agree to a conversation without it feeling uh, threatening. Yeah, this guy actually took out of my pocket all the secrets. So I don't know what I'm going to say next, but <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. But uh, I would love just to emphasize on one thing. Vlad mentioned handwritten notes. Vlad mentioned gifts, of direct mail works. And uh, to be honest, guys, I, I was just, while Vlad was sharing this with you, I was remembering my early days at Kimberly Clark Corporation and you know, like these were the normal things. This is what how we used to build relationship with our core accounts because uh, our you know annual contract value was 
uh, where, uh, where I am from 500k to like 50 million per year, right? And then you, this was normal, but nowadays people think that, wow, this is a gross hack. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, why I just wanted to say this? Because if nobody in your industry does this, that's the easiest way to stand out. And uh, quite often uh, I see, I mean, there are a lot of conversations about AI, automation, you know, lots of these things. Uh, just one thing, please uh, give me a favor and don't ask ChatGPT to recommend you how to run customer research better than if, if you'll use the insights from this podcast. I just wanted to say, yeah, yeah, ask ChatGPT, prompt ChatGPT to, to send a message to your customer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please, just... don't, don't do this, please. <laughs> and yeah, what I wanted to say, so just uh, come back to the principles, to the evergreen principles that were working forever. And if you'll use these things that a lot of people think that they are not scalable, the things that are, that seems to be non-scalable are the best things that you can do and that would differentiate you from the competition. So uh, that being said. Yeah, before you move into yeah. the next point, just wanted to read a comment because this is a recorded podcast. So yes, you will have a recording. It's going to appear on our podcast channel, Full Funnel B2B Marketing Podcast. And we have a question or a command. It's actually a remark from Johan or John Darlin, just tell your customer they are um, one of your most important customer and they really want their help to see what you should improve. That's a tip from Johan and that I wanted to read out. Yeah, and for me, what also important is that uh, the outcomes of your customer research uh, could be treated as a litmus test of your level of relationship. For me, when cust when companies say uh, tell tell us that we are scared or our buyers don't want to you know to engage with us, for me this is the red flag, and this customer and uh, this usually correlates with the goals of that company. These companies are sales led, new logos oriented, and these companies put acquisition as the first goal as the top priority, but. These companies usually deal with churn rate and they always need to compensate the churn revenue. And that's a huge problem. So if you if you hear in your organization, if you hear this concern, that's just a red flag that you need to pay attention to that should be fixed as soon as possible. Why? Because otherwise you'll be dealing with a huge churn problem. And just bear to me, it's a question of time when you'll, when you'll start dealing with this. So that being said, a uh, few last points that we want to share in that playbook, right? Um, okay, we ran this interview, so we engaged with the target group, right? We got the insights, so what's next? Next is analyzing these insights, prioritizing them, and turning them into actions, right? So what is really important? First of all, as when I was uh, talking about the timeline, right? You need to also define the key stakeholders from sales, from client success, maybe your senior leadership who needs to be involved in the meeting where you are going to present the insights and who are going to discuss these insights and uh, brainstorm how to use this, right? So uh, ideally, First of all, you need to realize that not all insights were created equal, right? There could be some tiny remarks that, I mean, you could do like two minutes rule, right? From getting things done. This is something that you can improve. I don't know, change the button on your website from green to red, right? The most popular gross hacking advice <laughs> you are hearing. So <laughs> maybe you don't need to share this with senior leadership and just do maybe, or if you prefer to do like a, one hour brainstorming, then I mean, that's the deal. I don't, I'm not here to judge this workflow. So, uh, prioritize the insights by their potential impact, right? Okay, this seems to be this seems to be a huge insight. Okay, so our customers mentioned that they, um, basically, 
uh, for them, it's not clear how our pricing works or whatever, right? They didn't like that uh, they don't see a public price and that it's always customized. They don't understand how that pricing works. So basically, we need to improve our pricing model, right? That could be key. Or they didn't understood the industry use cases. Generally, they understand how the product works, but they don't understand how to apply or how to use this product in that specific vertical, what's the added value comparing to like a specific product, right? This is this insight might have a serious impact on your revenue. And this is something that you need to bring to the table, right? Now, then you brainstorm the actions that you need to take. Then you collect everybody. And this is where you can do a joint workshop. And then uh, you don't need to criticize any ideas. Make sure that everybody is involved, that everybody is welcome to share any ideas. How can we use this insight to improve this, right? And then you can prioritize all these actions by um, we always, you know, that we are framework guys, we always try to make it practical. So we usually love to prioritize these ideas by several things, by several criteria. So impact on your goal by effort that you need to put into, you know, uh, executing this um, program. Time to value. So how quickly can you get the value from executing this specific solution? Resources, right? Do you have resources, budget? So this could be the most important things that you need to pay attention to, right? And if you'll do a simple score and then you can prioritize ideas that you can implement. And the next step would be uh, basically if you stop here and unfortunately most companies stop here right then you have a fancy deck you have fancy workshops but i mean this is just something that only marketing team can be proud about if you don't actually execute it right then it's useless so the idea is okay we define that program next step is developing playbook for us what do i mean by playbook it's just a detailed list of actions with a clear owner, right, task owner, who is responsible for executing this specific task, specific deadlines, right, and also success metrics. So what is enough for us, right, or how, how are we going to measure the success of uh, implementation and when we are going to measure. Never, please, never say something as a solution. Yeah, so probably, um, let's say, we struggle with print awareness. So let's post on LinkedIn. Let's do a thought leadership on LinkedIn. What the heck does it mean, right? Nobody gets it. So what are you going to post on LinkedIn? Uh, super proud to announce that I am going to post on LinkedIn every single day. I would post top-notch industry content, right? Or what are you going on? Like uh, Risha, the content that was published on the blog, my marketing team wrote five chat GPT prompts, go and read it here, right? That's, I mean, the, but uh, of course I'm generalizing and I'm kind of <laughs> having a little bit sarcasm, adding a little bit sarcasm, sarcasm, sorry, here. But the point is that a lot of people can understand it differently and do, you know, things that basically fall down in the category of organic thought leadership right but it's far from what you want to achieve so make sure that you have very detailed instructions workflow etc plus you set up report frequency how frequently are you going to report on execute on execution of that specific program and review meetings review meetings are essential things every week you need to sit down with the key people who are involved in the execution and doing a simple retrospective what moves us forward what are the small wins that we gained and what's holding us back and what are our next steps are we going according to our plan right uh are there any things that are blocking us how can we solve this this is really essential and that being said uh let's share some practical examples Vlad, how to turn this into absolutely inside. let's do that just before i jump into the examples of both the questions and the insights and how we can uh, turn those insights into action. I wanted to address an, a question from Anne, uh, the, which was, who should do this research? Who should do this outreach? The sales or account rep or marketing? I need to be practical here. So obviously, if you 
have somebody in house who has a good relationship let's say your account manager or account executive depending how you call them or maybe like somebody from the cs customer success team has a good relationship with that person well ideally they i mean they will have more success in doing the outreach than you if you're you if you're from marketing team okay that's an ideal scenario i just know from experience that uh, if you just go there and you ask your account executive could you please set up a meeting or a interview that very likely this won't happen they may say they may uh politely say yes but really getting the they might even say hey you know i tried but they're so busy right but um i think like at the end it is the person who needs this research results the most who will need to do this re it's just like a it's just a fact so depends on the, your relationship depends on on many uh different things but um let's definitely um think about your concrete situation you have a good relationship with the account executive go talk to them try to get that if not reduce the ask maybe ask just for an intro ask would you mind if i put you in cc or just mention that you recommended me that i speak to them or maybe maybe you can just also go for a, an approach where you just ask for forgiveness instead of permission and you just take your own initiative and reach out to the buyers so, so that was just like a practical thought on this and uh before you'll share the examples before i'll share the screen uh the mind if i will quickly uh share information about the sponsors of today's podcast episode this <laughs> podcast was sponsored by truly yours by <laughs> co-founders of full final data yeah i'm of course kidding but uh just quickly uh would love to mention one thing guys uh once a year we run a full final gtm strategy bootcamp some of you probably got emails from me and uh before the session, I got a few questions. Basically, if the customer research a part of that GTM bootcamp, absolutely yes. So if uh, this is something that you would love to do with us, with our help during the next four weeks, uh, what will drop a link in the chat and you are very welcome to join us. We'll have eight live, ses eight live sessions. <laughs> 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 no love sessions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Depending on how you treat it, of course. <laughs> so, yeah, you're very welcome to join. That being said, uh, let's come back to the practical insights. All right, let's share this. So, I actually posted this on LinkedIn, LinkedIn recently, uh, but what, what we wanted to share here, I think, is what um, Andre already went through the different groups of questions that you can ask in the customer research. So I think here what we want to share, a very concrete example of both the questions, but then also the kind of insights you might get there and how you can turn that insights into action. Okay. So being very practical about this, the first set of questions is all about the buying trigger. A mistake that some marketers make i'm sure none of you make this mistake is to kind of like looking at whether those are digital analytics you know or any other sort of attribution where do you hear about us or how did they come into your funnel how do they come into your uh on your website whatever assuming that kind of this is where the buyer journey starts but the buyer journey actually starts way earlier so if you look at it from the perspective of the buyer, let's say I'm a buyer and I want to... A love session. <laughs> I don't want any love sessions. I'm a happily married man. I'm 20 plus years married. I should know this. 23 years married. Anyhow, um, <laughs> wanted to speak about the buying triggers. <laughs> Anyhow, so basically... If I'm a marketer, it doesn't mean that I'm shopping for a MarTech solution. That's kind of what, what a lot of uh, outbound people may assume, right? Uh, pitching me solutions that I'm not really buying right now. It's not because they are a, a buyer or they fit the role and they work in a company that are in the buying. So 
we want to understand like what is actually happening in that business that shifts their priorities. Why? Because look, nobody wants to buy yet another piece of software. Nobody wants to hire a training or consulting company if they don't have to, right? <laughs> you, just, <laughs> you just broke my heart. <laughs> and so, I mean, you, we are all busy as it is. We have just went through an implementation or whatever, right? So we don't, we don't want to do that. And by the way, if I'm, let's say, a marketer and you're trying to sell me a MarTech sol solution to solve my problem, well, also, like, I'm paid to deal with that problem. So, right? Anyhow. Going back to that, so usually something happens that triggers that research, and we're, we're, we're going to share a concrete example in a moment. But first of all, like, what are the kind of questions to cover that? You can ask them, like, what was happening? Like, think back before you started researching our solution. Like, what was happening in that in your business that made this a priority? Did something concrete happen, right? And then. What were the, actually the, the business goals that you were trying to achieve or the challenges that you're trying to solve, right? So really try to understand everything that was happening before because this is actually your biggest opportunity to get early on in the buyer journey. Once you understand that, you understand how you can, what, what you should be talking about in your content and how you should be creating awareness and making sure that you get into that into, on their radar at least. All right, so let's look at an example of a buying trigger. Well, I don't know if you can read this, so I'm going to read this with you. I, I put my glasses on for this session. Um, beat, so this example is about a real con customer that purchased from us, and it was a B2B company. I know I said B2B. B2B company, uh, and this is actually a typical scenario. They, they hired a bunch of SDRs and marketers. They actually won an investment, so that was like the first thing that happened. They won an investment, and... They, together with the investment, they also won uh, high pressure to grow, obviously, right? And like everybody else in the industry, they follow the same predictive revenue playbook. They hired a bunch of marketers, the, oh, I'm sorry, SDRs, who started to do a lot of outbound, outbound calling, outbound emailing, etc. You know, all, the, all about that playbook. They hired also a marketing team, marketing team started advertising all over the place, uh, usually they were measured by MQLs, as you know, and they were driving these MQLs. And what happens is that after a year of doing that, growing that, those teams, trying different experiments, seeing what will stick, they figured out that this is actually not working. They, 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 don't, they are generating a lot of MQLs, thousands, if not tens of thousands of MQLs, but these MQLs are not really converting into sales. And also the outbound team or the SDR team is having really miserable response rates, which, by the way, have dropped by almost a half uh, during the last year. That's, that's a, a, a report that I just read, and I'm not surprised. And then even when they book the calls, they have a lot of no-shows. So it's really not working. So they came to that uh, realization, and they started to ask themselves, OK, so why is this not working? Is there maybe a better way to market? Maybe that's because like we have this like specific niche that we are targeting. We have complex sales, multiple buyers, high ACV, right? What are other companies who have who are like us? What are they doing? Right? So these are the kind of questions they may be asking themselves. And maybe they start asking also their peers, talking, talking about this with their peers and trying to figure this out. So how do we use this insight? Let's say that I have just had this conversation with Andre, who was that fictive buyer, and, and he just shared all this story with me. Uh, so what can I do? What can we do internally to uh, turn that into action? Well, one thing that we can do is, for example, we can now go and very proactively go after companies that have hired a bunch of SDRs and marketers. They have won an investment, let's say, six to 12 months ago, hired and grew these teams. I mean, it's actually a, a, a sales navigator query that you can build that can produce a list like that, of course, with some ICP qualification there, right? Then I can also think, okay, what are the moments? And I don't even have to think about it. I can ask Andre, the fictive buyer, Andre, not, not Andre, my co-founder, ask him like, okay, but okay, when were these discussion happening, right? And he might say, well, it was at the end of the fiscal year, we were doing the review or end of the quarter, whatever. 
and I could say like, okay, so this is actually a very good time for me to start speaking about um, the issues that I know my buyer said because my buyer just shared this with me, right? My, this my is customer. what I'll do in December. <laughs> Yeah, we are going to spam all of you with with now, and then what can I do? Like, what what are, what are some other actions that I can take or insights or how I can turn that into action? Well, I can maybe say, you know what, if you're talking, if you're like, if you want to launch a campaign and target those companies at that right time and those those specific companies, what should be the messaging or what should be the content that we are sharing? Or what should be the topics? Well. Maybe we should talk about these problems that we know they had. Like, okay, why are I'm I'm literally going to translate what they said to me here, right? So why is this not working? Well, why generic one MQLs fail for companies with high SCV? I'm just li literally like mirroring this, turning that into message and a content, right? I can again look at this. They said, what are out others doing? Well, maybe we should share case studies of what others are doing success successfully uh, to transform from an ineffective go-to-market motion to an effective go-to-market motion, right? And uh, with that, hopefully, also, of course, trigger the, the buyer journey and, and consideration of the solution that we are selling. And you mentioned actually the predictive revenue playbook. And um, I mean, probably you are not aware of the problem and we can't blame the guys who are leveraging it. The problem is that uh, publishers, when they were publishing this predict predictive revenue playbook, they just kicked out one word from it. Do you know which one? No. Predictive zero revenue. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you can't blame guys for not knowing the truth. <laughs> I mean, doing a bunch of MKLs and generic outbound always leads to the same result. So. <laughs> yeah, just having some fun. Uh, cool. That's uh, basically the point, right? You can always, Oops. yeah, translate these insights into some actionable uh, programs. So let's go. Let's quickly cover this, and um, yeah, that yeah. would be okay. it. So let me then uh, go to the next one, which is research process. Andre spoke about it. Essentially, how do they discover a solution like ours? What are the kind of questions that you can ask? Well, you can ask them simply. So let's say I spoke to Andre, who is my customer, and he like just shared this whole story about MQLs with me. And I can ask him, okay, but okay, so what did you do? What was what 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 happened after that? Like, what are the steps that you you have taken? Like, who was involved in this process? Um, did you search for some information? Where were you searching for that information? Who did you consult? Who did you ask for an advice? Right. So really trying to dig and 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 I uncover all the steps that my customer went from that trigger to the decision, okay, hey, I should actually talk to you guys or I should book a call with you. And then for each of these steps, I might even ask them things like, okay, so when you were, you know, um, you said that you were researching, no, you said that you reached out in this community. So do you remember what questions you asked and like what were what were your conclusions from that discussion that you had in the community, right? What did your peers recommend? Because maybe Andre mentioned, okay, my peers. So I, I tried to dig as much as possible at what their questions were as they were like moving through these stages. What were the information they were trying to learn? Because these are all the things that we can now use uh, in our marketing. So if I move on here, I don't know. I'm yeah here. Uh, a concrete example of what Andre actually shared. Well, no, what our customer shared with me. <laughs> uh, it was, first of all, we found out that the research was led by the VP of marketing and that she started, like actually a lot of senior buyers start looking around their network and somebody recommended their content. Right, So she started just talking about her challenges and just like, is there anybody else who, who's, who has experienced the same? What did you like do? do about it we are like this complex high acv and they say ah these guys post exactly about this problem you should follow them on link you should follow their content and she actually started following us on linkedin and you know as she was like you know reading our content she discovered that we are talking a lot about abm she started diving deeper into abm like trying to understand what it is joined some of our webinars 
Um, but then also, meanwhile, she also went into a Slack community. She's like a niche Slack community she's a member of. And just ask like, hey, guys, did anybody have an experience with the ABM? Like, what was your experience? What did you learn? Like, did this work out for you? You know, and then some people might have said, you know what? We actually tried to, to buy the, the ABM stack and just follow the playbook from, from the MarTech vendors. That didn't really work out for us. We kind of got burned on this. And then another person said, yeah, that's true because it's really like tricky to get this strategy right. I would advise you that you definitely speak to somebody who had an experience, maybe you know, take a training, hire a, a consulting company. And now in this very, very specific case, because she was already uh, following us, we were kind of top of her mind as, as ABM consulting vendor. And that's why she decided to uh, include us in her consideration set, right? So now, knowing this story, like what are the kind of actions that we can take? Uh, how can we turn these insights into action? Well, obviously we know that LinkedIn is really important for awareness creation. So we should double down on LinkedIn as we do, right? But maybe we should even like try to up our content, all right? Because we know that this is really a major source of our awareness. And then what are the kind of things that we should be talking about? Well, we know she just shared with us, the VP just shared with us that, you know, she heard that there is like a good way to do ABM and a bad way to do ABM. Well, maybe that's, a, maybe those are the things that we should be talking about. And maybe you've seen this post where we share the, the good ABM and the bad ABM or the old ABM and the new ABM, right? So this is exactly why we do this, right? And maybe, what was that slight community? Ah, you, that was, uh, whatever. Uh, community, maybe we should, you know, build a relationship with the owner of the community and maybe we should partner with them and, and run some sort of a industry research with them uh, to actually start uh, start connecting with the members of that community, build awareness in there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I will continue, but I see some chats, and we're coming up on hours, so I just want to make sure that we address the question. If there is one, ah, okay, no, okay, somebody needs to log off. Uh, that's uh, yeah. Nine. If you want, guys, we have this deck available on LinkedIn. Vlad posted recently, so you can go and just download this this from LinkedIn. What we wanted to do uh for today just to share with your practical framework and explain to you the way right how to plan the customer research uh how to structure it properly how to set up the right goals and how to take the insights collected into actions and uh i hope that uh we were successful with this uh all the recordings are available on spotify and on our youtube channel so um we'll share with you i mean well uh, i can send you the links but generally if you'll go to youtube or to spotify and type full funnel life you'll find our podcast and you'll be able to subscribe or as well you'll get an email from us uh, to subscribe to these channels plus uh the recording would be available on this platform so you can re-log in and you'll be able to watch it again so um that being said uh hopefully we were successful with our mission to uncover and demystify the b2b customer research uh, let us know in the comments was it helpful did you learn something new um whatever try uh, put plus five stars your favorite emoji you can put thumbs down where like we don't take it personal don't worry we are like tough eastern europeans so <laughs> uh any feedback would be helpful hey paul how are you good to see you again it was uh, fun hanging out in london yeah and just to wrap it up um yes the all the recordings from our full funnel live sessions we put on YouTube and on Spotify. Just type there full funnel live. Um, again, follow us on LinkedIn. We try our best to post top notch, if I can call it industry content, basically extracting our expertise and make it useful for everybody. Instead of talking about hype things, let's 
do ABM or let's do something else. And if you are interested, again, just to mention this, uh, once a year we host this live bootcamp. We start next week. So the link is in the chat. You are very welcome to join us. We still have um, spots open. And otherwise, see you in a week where uh, we'll be co-hosting a um, live session with guys from Chile Piper about targeting and nurturing buyers that are not active on social. Would be super interesting session with a lot of practical examples. See you. Thanks a lot for your engagement Thank and for you. brilliant questions. Cheers. Cheers.